So you've just installed DB5 and you want to set it up the correct way for you to design your website correctly. Let's dive in and let me show you what you need to do first. So first of all, you want to uh, create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here and go to page. Now you can name this page uh, whatever you want. So I'm just going to call this test. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to access the uh, variable manager because that is where really everything needs to be set up. So let's head over now. Let's close out of here. We're going to come over here now to the variable manager. So the first thing you need to do is to go in and set your fonts. So you need to know this ahead of time. You need to know what fonts you're going to use for your headings and what fonts you're going to use for your body text. So in this case, I've chosen pop-ins, but if you want to change this um, and perhaps, you know, use something like a play fair display, I mean, this is some totally something different. Let's go ahead and um, select this. Okay, so that's going to be my main heading text. I'm going to go ahead and save, and my body here is going to be enter. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because we don't want to keep uh, choosing the font while we're designing. So this is going to be global. Now, let me just show you what, it'll do, what it will look like if we don't set the globals. So let's say we add a text module. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, search for my text module in here and then select it. So now, normally, if you were doing it without the variables, you would say, for example, select the uh, text module here. You'd go into design text and then every time you want to choose your font, you would go in and choose it here. So can you imagine how crazy that would be if you were going to choose your font here every single time? That wouldn't be a good idea. And that is why we need to set it up once and for all. Okay, so that's uh, where we set up our font. Now, the other challenge we're also going to have is if you come in here, select your uh, module, go into design, you would need to go in and set your font size every single time. And that's not how you want to do this. If you do this, your website is going to be very inconsistent. You're going to forget what font size you used, where, and it's going to be, it's going to be all a mess. Now, by the way, I have a DV5 course. If you want to master DV5, I have a course on DVUniversity.com. Head over to DVUniversity.com and check it out. If you come over here to courses, it's only $27, okay? $27. And you can see here it has about 674 students. So this gives you an edge when it comes to building websites with DV5. As you know, DV is now getting a bit more complex. Not that it's a bad thing, but you do need to know where things are and how to use use them because now it's become a very powerful tool for us to design awesome looking websites. Anyway, the link to that will be in the, in the video description below. All right, so back over here. So the next thing you need to do is to set your font sizes. So back over here on the variable manager, you can go to um, your text, for example, you can go to your numbers, you can go to your links, you can go to your colors. So all these are the sort of things you need to set ahead of time. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is to uh, add my normal text. So this is going to be my body text. And I'm going to give it my value here of that. Now, you may be asking me, but Mac, what's this value? I mean, uh, that's not your typical 14 pixels or 10 pixels or whatever it is. This is called clamp. Now, clamp is very important because it makes the font size change size based on the screen size. And this is very, very powerful. And again, if we set it here, now I've clicked on save variables, okay? Apply changes. Now, if we save it here, that means that as we're designing, we don't have to keep memorizing what our font size is going to be. So let me just publish this and refresh. And then let's take a look and see how this is gonna work. Okay, great. So now that I've refreshed this, if I, need, if I need now to set my sizes, I would come over here, go to design, text, and then instead of coming over here to say 14 pixels, I can now go to my variable here, and there we go, body text, boom. And now that becomes my body text size. I don't need to go in and select 14 pixels or two rem or five rem or any of that, okay? Now, for those of you that use Sitecrafter Pro, all the variables are done for you ahead of time. You don't even need to go in and do what I'm doing right now. So if you are uh, someone that uses Sitecrafter Pro, 
just ignore this tutorial, okay? Just ignore it completely because Site Crafter is designed to set all your variables for you, your colors, your fonts, pretty much everything, okay? Including all your uh, margins and padding. So let's continue with the tutorial here. So now that I have this, you guessed it right. We also need to add variables for our colors. So what we're going to do here is we are going to go to um, coolers.co. So this is the tool that I use to generate my colors. So let's say we generate our colors. And wow, this looks like a really cool um, color palette. Okay. So I'm going to use this one here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come back over here. Go to my variable manager. And then we're going to go to colors. So for our colors now, this is going to be my primary color, by the way. I'm going to go in now and paste my color in here. Hit enter. And now that has become my primary color. Next, I need to add my secondary color. So my second color, let's go with this one here. Copy the hex. Come back over here. And then I'm going to go in and paste my secondary color. Just like that. Okay. So now that I have my colors, apply changes. When I start designing now, it's gonna be very, very easy for me to apply my colors. So let's say I want to apply my color, let's say first. And we also need to refresh by the way. So let's say I want to add my primary color to the background. I can just come over here, go to background. And then over here in the colors, you're going to notice now that my colors are now here. Now my primary color is here. I can just do that. Now my primary color has been added. If I want to, uh, let's say, add my secondary color at some point, let's say I want to add it as a background to this. I can select my text module, come over here to background, go to my color, and I'm going to choose my secondary color. Do you see that? So my colors now are all set. So you need to do this way before you start designing because whatever you do as you're designing this color is going to follow you wherever you go so which means it's going to make it very very easy to have a super consistent website so we've done our fonts we've done our colors and we've also done our sizes now back on the sizes you also need to add the sizes for your headings so it can't just be uh you've set your body text and that's it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, choose my clamp value for my headings back over here now on the numbers, I'm going to add another one. So this one here is going to be my heading one. I'm going to go in, paste my value, save variables. Okay. Apply changes. Okay. Let's, let's close out of here. We're going to save. And then we're going to refresh this. So let's say I want to add a heading module. I'm going to select it. So first of all, you can see, I mean, it's not really visible. Okay. So let's change the color. Now, if we don't set our colors correctly, here's what's going to happen. You, you select it here. You go to your design, heading text, and now you want to pick a color. So I'm going to come over here. So here again, you can see these are all our colors. I can select it right there. That's pretty cool. Now, when it comes to the size, we now need to add our variable. So I'm going to come over here and I have a heading. Where's my heading size? Hmm. That's strange. Let me go back to my variable manager because I have my heading one. Okay. There it is. Heading one. So let's go to our variables. Wow. Okay. It's not showing. Let's refresh. So it's very important that uh, when you add all your values, you need to refresh so that uh, at least the, uh, the builder gets up to speed. Okay, so, ah, you know what I was doing wrong? I was coming over here to the heading text color. So if you need to add the size, you need to come to heading text size. So now I'm gonna click the variable and sure enough, here it is, heading one. So now my headings are all going to be consistent across the whole website. Now, I also want to share with you a really cool tip. And that is now that we have our heading, we have our size, we have our color, we can actually come over here and create a new preset from current styles. 
And let's call this heading one. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply this as a default, just like that, save preset. Okay, so now that we have our preset done for our heading one, I can now come over here, search for my heading module, select it, and you can see now that this is already set. I don't need to go in and you know change anything. So this is going to be consistent pretty much across the whole website. So what we've done so far to summarize this is we've set up all our variables. So our very first variable that we have here is the font. So our font here is going to be consistent throughout and our body font as well. Next, we also have our colors. I was able to change my primary color and my secondary color. I was also able to add my heading one size and my body text size, okay? Now, the really cool thing about this as well is, let's say it's for some reason you want to change your branding, you'd come over here to your colors, go to your primary color, and then change it all together. Do you see that? It's now changing, you know, like in real time. You see that? So that could be my new branding. I can come over here to my secondary color, do the same thing, oops. Do the same thing here. So maybe that's my secondary color right there. It is now going to apply across the whole website. Okay, and now I didn't save, but if I had saved, it applies across the whole website, making it easier to manage, rebrand your website, and also to maintain it very, very easy. Now, as I mentioned earlier on with uh, the Divi5 framework we're called Sidecrafter Pro, uh, all you need to do is to change these values in one place, and they also apply across the whole website. But it's a totally different way of designing websites. It's called utility-based editing. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comments box below. Is this your workflow that you use to design your websites? If not, please share it in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.